Have you ever had to introduce a guest speaker on stage or in a virtual meeting? It's very easy to mess up badly, which can hurt your reputation and your career. So today I'm breaking down exactly how to introduce a guest speaker in person or in a virtual meeting. You know, as a communication coach and professional speaker, I've seen a lot of poor and embarrassing introductions of guest speakers. Maybe you've seen some of the worst introductions too. The person who reads the long biography word for word, exactly as it is written. The introduction that seems to last longer than the speech itself. The introducer who makes it more about them than about the speaker. And here's a life-saving pro tip. Make sure you know how to pronounce the speaker's name. There's nothing more embarrassing for you and more awkward for your speaker than mispronouncing their name. Write down the specific pronunciation. Look, I have a simple name, John Millen, but most of my life I've been called Miller or Mullen, including at our wedding. Announcing, Mr. and Mrs. Mullen. Thank you, Pastor. These are just a few examples of how the simple act of welcoming someone to the stage or into a video room can go very, very wrong. The good news is that with some planning and practice, you can learn to introduce people in a way that will make you and your speaker shine. Welcome to Coffee with John, where I give you the best tips I've been teaching CEOs and other leaders over the past 20 years on communication, leadership, and habits over coffee. Here are my seven best tips to help you next time you have to make an introduction. Number one, and most important, keep it short. Your job is to set the tone and to transition the person to the audience. That's true whether you're on Zoom with your team or on a stage at a conference. Your introduction should be clear, concise, and relevant. In most cases, that means like 60 to 90 seconds really should be your goal. Some introductions will be shorter and some will be longer, kind of depending on what the situation is. Number two, do your research. You may have the speaker's bio, but you should still do some homework before the event. Your goal should be to learn what really your listeners are going to find most interesting about this person. If possible, talk with the person ahead of time. You'll not only find out how they'd like to be introduced, but you'll also make a great connection. If the audience already has their bio, then point that out and just cover a few of the coolest things you learned about that person. Number three, make it personal. You may receive a written introduction from some speakers. As a professional speaker myself, I have short and medium length introductions that I give to my clients. If you receive one of these from a speaker, it's most effective if you kind of personalize it based on your own experiences. A brief story can have a huge impact in effectively kicking off the talk. I always appreciate it when someone introduces me with more of a personal touch. That helps me to more quickly develop an intimate relationship with the audience. Number four, don't steal the show. While it's good to make a personal connection with the speaker, it's also important to avoid making it about yourself. You can talk about your personal experience briefly, but then quickly transfer the attention to the speaker so you keep up the momentum. Number five, practice your introduction. It's good to rehearse your intro, making sure it sounds good out loud. Practicing out loud will help you feel confident and comfortable. I tell my coaching clients that when they're rehearsing, reading is not rehearsing. It doesn't count unless the words are spoken from your lips. Number six, establish the speaker's authority. It's important for you to establish the speaker's credibility as an expert on this topic and their relevance to the people listening. That's true whether you're in a small teamwork meeting or at a convention. People always want to know, why should I listen? Why should I care? Number seven, show your excitement for the speaker. How you introduce a speaker can set the tone not only for the talk, but for the entire event or meeting. Too many introductions are lukewarm, merely going through the motions. As I said, just reading their bio. If you're excited about what comes next, you need to let people know. You can do that through your voice, through your body language, and through your facial expressions. <laughs> Bring some energy to your introduction. Ask for a warm welcome and then lead the applause. 
These are my best tips for introducing a guest speaker. The art of the introduction is not easy, but with some practice and planning, you can create a warm welcome that is a win for you, your speaker, and your audience. What's been your experience with guest introductions? Let me know in the comments. And also leave me any questions you have and I will respond. And don't forget, pound that subscribe button. <laughs> and, and don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding! That way, I'll see you back here next time for more Coffee with John. And don't forget to pound that subscribe button. <laughs> and don't forget to pound that subscribe button. Boom! <laughs> that way, I'll see you back here next time for more Sunday coffee. Oh, she's.